Is that it? Adamandbeliever.com. Is the link working this time? Okay. Adamandbeliever.com forward slash. Look at somebody and say broken. Broken. Give it up for the band. Quaman Fowler on the vocoder Ewe. That boy can play that thing. Man, man. We had some fun with that old commission song, but hey man. You know, that was back when Run DMC got saved for like a week. <laughs> they got saved and they did that song, but it didn't last long. About a week, a couple of weeks. Hey, Amen. <laughs> hey, Amen. All right. Broken. The thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. He comes to invade your broken places. A thief will break, in, break a window to get in the car, but if he sees a car where the window's already broken, he's going to choose that car. That's easy. He sees a door that's unlocked. He's going to break in it. Amen. Amen. Me and my friends, when we was in high school, boy, we were some crazy folks. Thank God for deliverance. Amen. Amen. We walked by a door and it had the janitor's keys in it. And them keys just started. <laughs> we got those keys and man, we felt like we owned the school. We was in there just when nobody else was there. And that's a, that was a good feeling for a high school student to walk the halls when the school is empty. We was crazy. But if we hadn't seen the keys, we probably wouldn't have done it. But that's what I'm saying, it was easy. So the devil looks for an easy way to break in. He's looking for something that's broken. In your life, he's looking for something that's broken. 1 Peter 5 and 8, be sober, be vigilant because your adversary, the devil, has a roaring lion, walketh about doing what? Seeking who? Who's available to devour? Who has an unprotected issue? Who has something about them that is broken? In the beginning, he approached Eve to break her faith in God. He caused her to question God. The devil always starts with a question. Always starts with a question. You see somebody, the devil say, you don't like them, do you? Starts with a question. Then you start thinking, you know, I really don't. A question. That's all it takes. Yep, made him question God. Yeah, you've been coming in here, you've been hearing this word, you've been growing, anybody been growing through the word? Growing through the word. And somebody come up to you and say, man, you go to that church over there with G. Craig? You say, yeah, yeah, I'm growing in the word. Really? You really like it? Oh, like, yeah. Do you really like it, though? They looking for something that's broken. <laughs> Now, you know, and everybody I always love to tell what I think. You know how he feel about this, and you know how he feel about that. Well, yeah, I mean, I, I may not agree with everything. Uh. So you don't agree with everything. Yeah, looking for something that's broken. He calls her to question God, which ended up destroying man's relationship with him. Genesis 3 and 4 says, And the serpent said unto the woman, after she told him, God said, The day we touch it, eat of it, we will surely die. The devil said, You will not surely die. What? She should have turned around and just walked away. But instead, she stayed to hear how she wasn't going to die and how he twisted the words to the point to where she ate. He was looking for something broken. Her desire to be better. Yeah. Adam believed 
I mean, Adam blamed Eve, didn't he? Amen. So Adam blamed, I don't know where Adam got the cold-blooded beard and, you know, <laughs> back then, but I mean, maybe there was an angel with some clippers. <laughs> Garden had everything else. Amen. But Adam blamed Eve, which caused enmity between man and woman. And even though God restored the original order of creation, he said that this enmity will exist all because the devil broke what was good and perfect. God's creation was good and perfect. Amen? I know some folks like to teach that when God made man and woman, the man wasn't over the woman. They were equal until they fell from creation. And then God put the man over the woman. And that's why we have the enmity to this day. That's not true. And the reason it's not true is this passage here. Genesis 5 and 2, after it all went down, he said, male and female created he them and blessed them and called their name what? And just in case you're trying to proof text some foolishness, he finished it and said, when he did that, he called their name Adam when? From the very beginning. Amen. So don't be gathering in little book clubs and reading Joyce Meyer's book and hearing this foolishness. Because that's a lie. It says right there. He, he didn't say he called their name Adam and Eve. God called their name Adam. Who named Eve? Adam did. Not God. Oh, I think I've just gone and preached this word. And mess with these Azusa convention preaching. All these lies and women gathering and all of that foolishness. It's a bunch of foolishness. It ain't the truth. Amen. Amen. We're going to tell the truth in here. Amen. Don't you love? Look at somebody say, I love the truth. Look at somebody say, even when it stings. Because it's going to sting every now and then. Amen. All right. Well, we cleared that up, didn't we? In order for the devil to have a way to hinder us, he must come through something that is broken in us walking about as a roaring lion roaring lion looking for something that is broken i talk about it every week about you getting your issues together your childhood issues stuff that you went through all of those things that make you you and who you are that's what the enemy's coming for if you have issues that are uncovered or undealt with he's gonna come for those issues because those things are broken yeah Sometimes people do things to you. They don't even know they're challenging your issues. They're not even trying to. But the devil knows. And he knows it's undealt with. Yeah. Same stuff can't make you mad all the time. If the same stuff make you mad over and over again at the same time every year, it's the devil. And something is undealt with. See, I'm not going to get a lot of amens, but you should eventually grow past certain things. Amen. Amen. The same thing can't keep getting you or it will keep getting you. You got to deal with your issues. Look at somebody say, deal with yourself. Yeah. And that don't come with an age limit either. You, you got to deal with yourself until yourself is finished. Amen. And the devil going to keep poking the bear. Trying to get that same reaction. And if you keep having it, you fall in for it. Proverbs 4 and 23. Keep thy heart with all diligence. For out of it are the issues of life. This is how we know who we are. What's coming out of our hearts. Our reactions. A thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy Thieves come to break in and take your goods. Amen. Don't it make you mad when folks steal your stuff? Your hard-earned stuff? Break your window and just 
vandalize your property. Ooh, that's what shotguns are for. I shouldn't have said that. Well, we are in Texas. Amen. You know, we can walk, carry one on our back. Carry one like Elma Fudd. Just say, what? <laughs> Hunting the wascally wabbit. <laughs> wabbit season. Yeah, but thieves come and break in and take your goods. They come through broken windows, hinges, locks, etc. This is how the thief gains access to our goods. John 10 and 1. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up any other way, the same is as or is a what? Thief and a robber. That's who comes and in through other ways other than entering through the door. Amen. Somebody like, well, when I was a thief, I came through doors. No. <laughs> I mean, come through an invitation through the door. <laughs> Amen. Why you remember that so good? Amen. You need full deliverance. Amen. But yeah, that's how thieves and robbers enter. A broken person is vulnerable to thieves. When your heart and mind is broken and focused on pain, you are not watching or guarding yourself against the thief. Whenever you're in pain, the next thing that's going to happen is the thief's going to show up and mess something up. Yeah, because when you're in pain, and fo I meant when you're focused on your pain. When you're in pain, in pain, broken, and focused on your pain, you can't be watching and guarding. That's why the devil does things to you. That's why he does things to hurt you or allows people to hurt you, to make you focus on how you feel. And if you're walking around, oh, man, I get, how you doing, sister? Oh! and never have a victorious testimony, I know you're not guarding. So I'm just waiting for it to get worse. And it's going to get worse because you're not guarded. Can I keep preaching in here? I know this is a message that some folks just don't like, you know. Amen. But don't, quit trying to get attention with your problems. Amen. Walk in some victory. Walk in some victory. Victory. Look at somebody and say, walk in victory. Amen. Amen. Everybody don't need to know. Amen. During this fast, you don't need to be walking around. <laughs> What's wrong? Man, I ain't had no sugar. <laughs> Bible says when you fast, don't look like you fasted. Don't be going around telling everybody, this is why I'm like this. Man, I ain't ate. I ain't ate. <laughs> when you focused on your pain and you're always talking about how you feel your problems and you're always talking about what the devil is doing to you and you don't have victory over stuff you're not watching and guarding and it's not going to get better Luke 12 and 39 and this know that if the good man of the house had known what hour the thief would come he would have watched and not have suffered his house to be broken through. We don't know when the thief is coming, so we got to stay on guard. So we can't focus. Yeah, we get hurt. Get out of that quick. Don't walk around downtrodden because you're going to make the situation worse because you can't watch. Amen? Those of us that are men, we just don't get the luxury of being downtrodden. We're watching for those of us that are husbands and fathers. We're watching for our wives. We're watching for our children. Amen. So we get about 10 minutes to be emotional. And then we got to get back on our post. That's why it's good to have a fellowship of brothers. Amen. Because the brothers will put you right back in your spot. Oh, man, I'm sorry to hear that, dude. Man, it's going to be all right. Y'all dap it up, whatever. Okay, now get back to work.
Amen. Man, you been home for it five days? Yeah, I took off. Why? Because my feelings hurt. You took off for feelings being hurt? They allowing that now? What kind of company is that? Who do you work for? But you got to keep watching. Because the devil's coming for what is broken. Now, men, if you're, if you're broken like that, then you need to be healed. Because the enemy's going to jump through that to jump right into your wife, to jump right into your kids. If you're the head. See, it all went down in the garden because Adam didn't say nothing. God left him in charge. Because that's whose name he called when he went to calling names. He knew, God knew everybody that was involved. But he called the man. Amen. Adam, what is going down in the garden? So you got to keep watching. Look, somebody say, keep watching. You got to keep watching. A broken home is a major target for the thief because the goods are usually unprotected and the strong man is bound. When a strong man is on their post, they can guard what is broken and protect their goods from theft. So this is why the devil is breaking homes up. He wants to break up a home to leave the home vulnerable because if it's a broken home, the devil comes through us broken. Amen. That's why you got to stay together. Look at your husband or your wife and say, we stand together. Say, no matter what, we stand together. Amen. Single people, when I get married, say it. We stand together. Amen. You got to stay together. You got to work stuff out. Because you need the home. Home. Because if the home is broken, the enemy comes through what is broken. I don't have to give statistics. Statistics will tell you that. Satanists will tell you that. Worldly statistics will tell you that a home made up or comprised of a father and a mother has a higher success rate in rearing the children. Amen. That's a real thing. So we got to make sure that we stay together. Luke 11 and 21, when a strong man arm keepeth his palace, what happens? His goods are in peace. The strong man is not a perfect man, but he is a man that is willing to deal with his own brokenness. Amen. Amen. And tell your children that. Tell your son. Yeah, tell them you're not perfect. Amen. Amen. Tell them you're not perfect. But you're willing to deal with it. Your own brokenness. When you can admit that you need help. And work on yourself. Then the devil cannot spoil your goods. Amen. How do you admit you need help? You come to church. You come to church. Get the word. And allow it to work on you. That's you submitting to authority to say, I need help. Putting yourself in position to be helped. The enemy hates that. He wants you to work it out in your own head. Amen. 1 Corinthians 11 and 31. For if we would judge ourselves, guess what will happen? If you're willing to deal with it yourself, circumstances don't have to teach you. Consequences don't have to teach you if you're willing to work it out yourself. If you're willing to handle it yourself, amen, then trouble don't have to teach you. You don't have to suffer as an evildoer like the Bible says. Can I keep preaching in here? Amen. Amen. Somebody still messed up about Joyce Myers. Lord. Single mothers, you know I wasn't going to leave y'all out. 
and uncovered wives, you can be married and almost single. Y'all must work, they must work on their own brokenness, but also keep their children in an environment conducive to protection, growth, and security. Amen. You need more than help with your children. So you bring them to a place like this, you bring your son here and he's seeing all of these men in this church. Amen. We all look like men. And they're inspired by that. That's why all our boys in here look like their daddies. We all look like men in here. Thank you for that. Amen. That's, well, that's, that's it. And I don't walk around telling everybody how to look. It's just a part of our DNA as a ministry. We just look like men. Amen. We look neat and groomed. Oh, I'm going to talk about that in this next message. It ain't just hairstyles. Oh, there's a spirit behind that. And it's a big ugly one too. Oh, we're going to discuss it in 14. My goodness. Stuff I didn't know. But it's stuff behind it. Yes. And you know, sometimes you don't know. Like the old church, they didn't know certain things, but they knew you shouldn't be doing it. Remember that? They didn't know that the whole world was going to go hoochie. But they knew when you came to church, you need to cover your body up. Yeah, they couldn't go to the scripture, but they knew something was wrong with tattoos. They couldn't tell you. They just knew it's a spirit behind that baby. And they were right. Yeah. May boys cut their hair. They didn't know why they was doing that. They just wanted you to look neat. They thought, but there's a spirit behind that. Yeah. Yeah, it only exists in deviant cultures. So all of that. Amen. When you bring your son here, they get to see a different, you know. They get to see it done differently. And so that inspires them. Hey, I don't have to do what hip hop tells me. Hip hop don't have to be my father when God can be my father and I can learn from men that are in God, men that are serving God. I don't have to do what Lil Wayne is doing. Who wants to do what he's doing? He don't want to do what he's doing. He, he has to scare himself when he look in the mirror. Ah! Oh, that's me. Good grief. Yeah. But some folks say, that's okay. Let him be who he is. The Bible said, come as you are. He can't come like that. Amen. Brother, we don't have ghouls and goblins at this church. Amen. When, is too, when is it too far? He's just expressing himself. Expressing himself as a What? And everybody talk that noise, but let him let you own a you own a business, and he come in and ask for a job ap application. What you gonna say? Unless you run in a haunted house. Oh, brother, I'm promoting you to the manager. You you getting promoted? You ain't got the job, and I'm promoting you. And you gonna do good work? And we paying you double. And we gonna just take off the costume fee, bro. No, y'all, something is wrong with that. Amen. And it's time for somebody to say something. Uh, you're going to hurt his feelings. Look at all the kids he's hurting. Look at all the young people he's hurting. Why do we care about his feelings? And he's destroying a generation of young people. Young boys don't have anything to aspire to. They don't have anyone to look up to. So they turn him on. Now they want to decorate themselves like that. Something's wrong with that.
Yeah, same with the young girls. They want to be Nicki Minaj. Nasty. Rapping about your sexuality and sexual promiscuity. Nasty. Hey, somebody need to say something. Well, you know, that's I, that ain't my culture. That's not my heritage. I ain't kin to that. I didn't come from that. I don't belong to that. That has nothing to do with who I am. That's the devil. That's demons. I don't want to be around nobody look like that and act like that and talk like that. <laughs> oh, hush. Injecting anything in their butts. Semen and fix a flat. No, now wait a minute. <laughs> Fix a flat? <laughs> you heard of that? You heard of that? Fix a flat? So they go to AutoZone and be in line with a basket full of. <laughs> well, you sure got a lot of flat tires. No, these ain't for top. What? How do they get it in there? So you get the little basketball needle, put it at the end, and they put it in a syringe. What you been watching, baby? How do you know? How did I miss that episode? You knew about that? Oh, Tangy. Oh, a nurse. An ER nurse. Now, ain't no telling what you saw. In Atlanta. Oh, gosh. What did the men bring in there? What they have cans of? <laughs> Let me stop. <laughs> Let me stop. Oh, this message took a bad turn somewhere. I think it was AutoZone. That's. Fix a flat. <laughs> Won't they just go to discount tire? And just <laughs> brother, why are you checking them tires? <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> In the absence of the notch, wait, I need a minute to regroup. This is just went somewhere. I, I, I did not know that. And they're dying of it. Now, I knew they was dying, but I thought it was like cement. I know one lady put cement in herself. Cement. To look like Nicki Minaj. Cement. Just make a noise every time she sit down. <laughs> Pop! <laughs> who, who dropped that cinder block? <laughs> okay. Lord, <laughs> this... Y'all giving me too much ammunition. Y'all quit telling me stuff. Don't, don't tell me nothing else. Don't just don't tell me nothing else. Because jokes just be coming. <laughs> I can't believe this. But that's because of Nicki Minaj and them. The Kim Kardashian. Yeah, hip hop. I told y'all hip hop was going to do that. Years ago. That's what they want to look like. Single mothers and uncovered wives must work on their own brokenness, but also keep their children in an environment conducive to protection, growth, and security. In the absence of their natural fathers, children can be guarded and protected by a fellowship of strong men. Amen. Amen. Now that only works. That only works if you're looking for reconciliation for your children and their father. If you're looking to keep your children from their father, that's not going to work. Amen. Because that's not what God wants. You can't change your mind about who you decided to have a baby with.
Hebrews 10 and 25, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves as the matter of some is, but exhorting one another so much the more as the end times approach. Summary. That was nice and short. I'm going to be preaching shorter messages as the 28th comes. Amen. Or I'm going to accidentally preach that whole message if I keep going. Summary. Yeah, clap again. Uh, <laughs> visitors are like, what is going on? <laughs> what is going on? Fix a flap and cement. That's what they doing out there. In order to guard yourselves from a thief, you must fortify your windows, doors, and locks. Amen? Fortify your windows, doors, and locks. Remember when we were young, folks from the neighborhood would just come in your house. You leave the door unlocked. I'm about to, you know, Sister Buttermilk. I'm about to bring a cake. Okay, well, just come on, put it on the, put it on the kitchen table. I'm busy, but just come on in. Remember those days? You can't do that now. Sister Buttermilk is a transgender now. And he coming in there, you know he's mad. Any man wearing pumps is mad. Yeah. So you can't trust. You can't leave the door unlocked. You just can't. It's just a different time. You got to look for your kids. You got to, depending on their age, you got to follow them to the restroom. Amen. You got to follow them to the restroom. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No. Go in there. I'm not talking about just let them go. No. Amen. I'm still, Jonathan is six foot two at 17 and I'm still peeking around corners is he all right Landon maybe you need to go check Landon like yeah I'm gonna go see we still do that don't we yeah at church too amen I mean you just have to folks are crazy now and the thief is always looking for something an open window open door so make, uh, make sure nothing is broken in your life, which is to say, make sure you are not harboring anything that the enemy can exploit in order to steal from you. If you harboring anything, feelings against somebody, feelings against your own self, low self-worth, low value, don't harbor that. Amen. Drug problem, weed problem, smoking problem, porn problem, all of these problems, the enemy will come and see that that's broken and a way for him to enter. Amen. Confess your sins. This is how, this is, this is how you fortify the windows, doors, and locks of your life. Confess your sin. Look at somebody and say, confess your sin. Confess your sin. Forgive everyone that you have an offense against or that has an offense against you. Until you do that, the devil's going to keep coming through that same window because it's broken. Apologize for hurting people. Forgive me, I'm sorry. Even when you don't really fully understand what you did. In their mind, they processed it differently. I'm talking about people you in fellowship with. I, you know, man, if, if, if that hurts you like that, I'm sorry. I didn't mean it like that. Amen. And if I did mean it like that, I'm sorry. I was mad at you. I shouldn't have said that while I was upset. Amen. I learned that lesson when I was... Really young, I was a youth pastor at a church, and uh, my pastor out there, um, we put on a summer youth conference, uh, summer youth, was it summer, summer concert, uh, Greg O'Quinn, and they came out there, and so I think me and Carmina put that on way back in the day, and we was in the back, I guess, counting the money from the offering, and he was in the other room, and didn't know I was in the room, so he was talking about me. He said, I know these ends ain't took this money, and 
Now, I know they ain't just took this money. He better die. I'm finna go. And he didn't know I was right there. And I heard him. I was like, oh, it's my pastor. My feelings was hurt. And I told him, I said, hey, man, I heard you. Like the next day or something, I said, man, you, you remember that coffee? I said, man, I, I'm sorry, man. I, I mean, no, I told him, I said, man, I heard you. Like you was talking about me. And I thought we was good. He said, yep, I was. He said, I called you a nigga. And I said you was no good. He said, I said that because I thought you stole the money. He said, but I'm sorry. And you know, in my mind, I'm thinking, I've never had a grown man in his position do this. He said, I'm sorry. He said, man, we all talk a certain way when we don't know somebody's listening. He said, but it don't change how I feel about you. He said, man, you still my man. You still my youth pastor. And if you can forgive me, man, we can just keep going. And I was like, wow. And I said, yeah, man, I forgive you because I talk like that too with everybody. <laughs> Boy, I hope none of y'all hear what I'm saying. Nobody in this church. Oh, I hope you don't hear me. My God. Ooh, don't be listening at the other door. When you hear me talking behind the door, you go just go, go get away. Let's go. I might talk about you. I don't know. But I learned that at a young age. I think I was, I was very young, but it changed my life. I never forgot it. Man, we do talk different when other people are around, and we don't want them to hear us, but if they do hear us, we got to apologize because we don't want them to be hurt by it. And man, I say stuff I don't mean. That's how he was feeling. He thought we had just stole the money from the offering. And you know how Baptist preachers are about their money. No, I'm just playing. <laughs> but, <laughs> but yeah, but he got it straight and that changed my life. And we were cool after that. Still cool to this day. So that's how you have to be. You got to own up to it. Hey, yeah, I did say that. I shouldn't have. I'm sorry. Amen. I feel like I just taught somebody something. Amen. So apologize for hurting people. And let go of what others have done to you. Let it go. Love your enemies and pray for them. Amen. Some of them you got to love from a distance. Because of the way they feel about you. You can't change how folks feel about you sometimes. But love your enemies and pray for them. Love your husband and wife. This is how you keep the windows, doors fortified. So they can't get broken into. Love your wife. Love your husband. Amen. Give them what they need. Honor your father and mother. Both of them. You don't understand. My daddy had Your daddy had you. And God says, honor them. If you don't, it's a broken window. Respect and reverence those that are over you in the Lord and watch for your souls. Uh-oh. That's a broken window too. That's a... Do, that's somebody mess with the door lock of your life because you can't keep your mouth off of leadership. The only people that always have a problem with leadership are people that want to leave and want to lead and can't. Amen. Because if you lead, nobody's going to follow you nowhere. So you got to talk about the leader that's leading because people want to follow them. But you got to respect and reverence them. Respect and reverence those that are over you in the Lord and watch for you. I don't reverence no man. Well, then you out of order. <laughs> you, you, you must don't have a dictionary and know what reverence means. It means deep honor. That's it. Keep your mind and heart free from drama. Keep your mind and heart free from drama. You ought to be able to smell it because it always comes to you. By now, you ought to be sick of the taste. 
So keep your mind and heart free from drama. So the thief will not have a broken entryway into your life. Once you fortify everything, you still need a monitored burglar alarm. Amen. I got locks on my doors and everything, and I still have a monitored burglar alarm. The alarm is the Holy Ghost. He can be a motion detector to let you know when the thief is lurking. He can turn on the emergency floodlights when an intruder is near to expose him. And he can be a warning sound that shakes your being when danger has breached the perimeter. God will guard you and protect you if you keep him near. We all have been broken, but the potter can make us whole again and fortify us to stand against all thieves that try to break in. Amen? Amen. John 10 and 10. The thief cometh not but for to steal, to kill, and what? To destroy. But I am come that you might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. Everyone stand to your feet. Amen. Let's fortify. Let's fortify the locks, the windows, the doors. Let's make sure our perimeter is guarded. And let's just give God anything that keeps opening us up to the attacks of the enemy. Anything that's broken, we want God to heal it today. If that's you, just come on up. We want God to fix this. This needs to end. It needs to be fixed. Hallelujah. 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 He comes through broken places. Broken places. Broken places. Devil did something in your life, caused the window, door, something to be broken. But God wants to protect you by fixing what is broken. He said a broken and contrite heart he would not despise. When my mother and own father turn against me or forsake me, that's when the Lord takes me up. He wants to fix what is broken. What is broken? What is broken? What is broken? Hallelujah. 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 He's near to a broken heart. Everyone bow your heads. Father God, we just thank you, Lord. Thank you for this message. Thank you for opening our eyes to the reality of our lives. While the message was going forth, Father God, many of us saw the very thing that was being preached. We saw that broken place, that broken window, that broken door, those broken locks, that, that place that we keep focusing on, which leaves us unguarded and unprotected. We can't watch and pray like your word says. After we put on the whole armor of God, we still have to watch and pray. So, Father, we ask right now that you would fix that area once and for all. Come on, lift your hands up. Father God, fortify that area. Make us strong in that area. Lock that door. Lock that window. We're tired of those feelings. We're tired of that issue. We're tired of the same thing happening over and over, year after year. Father God, the same thing, same people, same situation same circumstance father god help us fix what is broken in the name of jesus heal that broken heart heal our broken hearts heal our broken minds heal our broken emotions father god we many of us have suffered 
even at the hands of our own parents, own friends, own family. Father God, many of us were bullied our whole lives. We were talked down on. We were looked down on. Father God, the devil set a trap that keeps catching us. But Father, right now, we give it to you. We open up our hearts to be repaired. Fix what is broken. In the name of Jesus. Whether it's our marriage. Whether it's our children. Whether it's our hearts. Whether it's how we feel about ourselves. Whether it's how we feel about others. Fix it Lord. Fix it Lord. In the name of Jesus. We pray. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Come on and hug somebody and say, I'm not broken anymore. I'm not broken. God has fixed it. On your way to your seats. Hallelujah. God has fixed it. God has fixed it. Hallelujah. Fix me. Fix me. Lord, just make it right. 